Uh, good morning. Uh, this morning we're going to open this uh, Western Digital My Book uh, World Edition. Uh, it isn't working, but I've seen on the internet, uh, YouTube, etc., that um, you need two screwdrivers and a lot of plying, a lot of prying. Well, that isn't true. They're very, very easy to open and I'm going to show you how it's done. Right. Now, I don't know whether this rubber band is uh, symmetrical or not, so I'm just going to put a little black mark on there, and then I'm going to pull it off, which should be quite easy. Once you get it going, it comes off very, very easily, I can assure you. Let's try here. There it is. OK, you just pull that out. Gently, so as not to break it. It has got to go back in, if I succeed in repairing the hard drive. So that comes off very, very easily. There we are, we put that aside. Now, people on... <laughs> YouTube say that you need two screwdrivers and you start prying away here or there or one or two people suggest here. You don't. If you look very, very carefully on the spine side of the book, you will see a little tab. And all you need to do is to press down that tab and the body of the book comes away. It is a bit tricky, but just persevere. It's a question of holding down this and sliding it out. You have to do this at both sides. There we are. Did you hear the click? It has, in fact, already started to open. Now, the thing is that has, that has to stay out while we do exactly the same on the other side. Now here's the white tab, I hope you can see that, so I'm going to press that down and push in this manner. I think I've done it, not quite, just bear with me a moment. There we are, I've done it. And that's all you have to do. Now you can clearly see this little tab and I used um, an ordinary flat screwdriver just to push that down to unclip this little tab. Right, it's very very easy. I'll turn the my book over and here you can see the little tab on the other side and you can see that when you slide it together again um, that is going to click and it's going to hold the whole thing together. Um, so it's all very, very simple. Right? Here we have the hard drive. If I turn that over, this is the little um, board behind the press button start. Now the reason I'm doing this is because my spinning lights don't spin. In fact, they don't even light up. The little blue LEDs, which should whirl, showing me that the hard drive is in operation, uh, don't come on. Now, I've no idea why, but I can hear the disk spinning. And because the disk is spinning, I believe the actual hard drive works. So what I intend to do is to dismantle it connect the hard drive um, directly to a Linux computer and get the information off the hard drive. I've got about 107 uh, gig, I believe, of photographs and documents on there which I don't want to lose. But because it isn't working, I've decided to make this rather drastic uh, step of opening it up. Now you need a small 
crosshead screwdriver. Um, it isn't a Phillips. This is a very small, I hope you can see that, a small crosshead screwdriver. And I'm going to remove one, one, I'll put it there, two, I'm going to put it there. And then you need an ordinary Phillips screwdriver to take out the third screw. So I know that that is a Phillips screwdriver. I can't remember the name, I'm afraid, of this small crosshead. It's very similar to a Phillips, but it's a clean cross, whereas a Phillips uh, screw isn't such a clean cross. So you need two kinds of screwdrivers. At that point, this just lifts off. There we are. And that is the small board beneath the on-off switch. The circles with the revolving blue LEDs. That's what it looks like on one side. Here you can see the, the SATA cable. This is the, these are the power wires. And here is the actual hard drive itself. As I said, when it's connected up, as soon as power um, is applied, not through the on-off switch, not through the on-off switch, but simply by connecting the cable um, to the wall socket, it, 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 it whirls, so I believe the hard drive is functional. So the fault is somewhere in the circuitry. Now, now we've got to go back to our Phillips screwdriver and there are just four screws, one, two, three, four. And because we've taken this board off previously, do you remember? We removed this board from that face. This now comes away with a little wiggle Now why doesn't that come away? The board inside is free. So I've turned the my book over and again we can see the, uh, the, the hard drive. Now here we have to move one two screws plus one, two screws. So that's four screws to come off here. One, two, three, and full. And then the drive just lifts out. The only thing that's holding it in now are the SATA cable 
and the power cable. Here are screws, that's a longer one, longer one, because we first removed four short screws and now we have four long screws. I've put, I've put one of the small screws back in there just to hold it on while I remove the cables. This you can do quite easily, levering them off with fingers and thumb. Here they come. There we are. So this is the SATA cable and these are the power cables. At this point, our drive should lift off. So now I'm going to remove the screw that I in fact put back in. And there we are. Here is the external casing. We'll put that aside. Here we have the hard drive which I'm going to connect <coughs> to a, a, a SATA cable, a power cable, and link it to a computer with a Linux uh, program. In that way, I hope to be able to get at my 107 giga of photographs and documents. Now the fault lies somewhere in this board. Although there's no obvious sign of um, burning, there's some heat deposit there, but I can't see anything which implies that something has blown. The important thing is to get at our data, and that's in this piece. So I'm not particularly worried about this, although, of course, um, I'll never be able to use it as a, a Wi-Fi external hard drive again. Uh, but the important thing is my data, and that's all in there. Okay. Hope that was easy to follow. Bye.